Now one simple thing you can do when you have the capability to visualize the spy axis at boot time is you can compare differences of behavior of the system based on you know changing configuration options and things like that. Does the system access more flash? Does it access less flash? And then of course if it's more or less you can go look into those particular regions that are accessed or not accessed and see what the nature of them is through reverse engineering. So I'd mentioned that my example board was selected because it also is vulnerable to an old uh, Intel management engine exploit. And so here I have a graph of the normal boot of the system, and I'm going to change this to be in blue. So you can do that by double clicking on the color and changing some different color. And I want to compare that against how the system behaves when the actual uh, TXE or management engine exploit is executed on the system at boot time. Now the nature of the exploit is that it exploits the management engine which runs first before the x86 system runs before the main UEFI BIOS firmware runs and then basically the exploited management engine firmware just kind of stops and waits for a JTAG connection. So if I click that on, you will see that this is the red access versus the blue access and I can kind of, you know, flip back and forth between them. But the noteworthy thing here is essentially the differences down here. These are the regions for management engine. This low region is where the management engine uh, data itself is. So let's get rid of that data. And so you can see that these basically look the same, like they're literally the same thing, just sort of shifted in time. And I'm not really sure why that time shifting occurred. It could have just been because this thing took, you know, a little longer to fiddle around with something. It could have been something to do with like, you know, I just reflashed the system and for one data point versus the other. Uh, of course, you know, you could skew these things, you know, just change the, the data point values to skew them and force them to overlap. But the point I want to make here is that on the system in red, on the boot flow in red, which is when it was exploited, we don't see this additional accesses to the spy flash at these other ranges. And if we looked at these ranges, we would see that those are other areas of the management engine firmware. So the point is the firmware gets a certain way in, it gets exploited, and then it just sort of sits in a infinite loop waiting for a debug connection. And so it never bothers to read in the rest of this. But at the same time, we do see the accesses to the rest of the spy flash chip. And that has to do with it, you know, trying to read in the information for ultimately loading the BIOS and launching the BIOS. Furthermore, you can see that this is sort of a nice linear thing, and this kind of is like linear, but it's got a kink in it, and that is essentially down to the fact that there were these parallel accesses. So this doesn't go up as fast because it's sort of like access here, then access here, then access here, then access here, and it's sort of jumping back and forth, and that sort of limits the, the slope of this, whereas the system where it just completely stopped accessing the management engine, uh, it, you know, had a higher slope in order to just read with no other stuff in parallel. So again, that's just one example of how you could, you know, see differences in behavior, uh, commonalities or differences. You know, if we force this thing to overlap and line up, then, you know, for instance, we would see uh, in this range, you know, what's accessed exactly the same versus what's slightly different and so forth. And this can be one way that you do a little bit of dynamic analysis, even on a uh, closed system where you perhaps don't have debugging access.